Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's the 3rd of October. Thanks for being here. So items I had on the agenda, news, action items, Antler, uh, with Basel leading that discussion. Uh, then upcoming elections, and that's mostly me giving a status report, and CDF topics, if Oleg joins us, or if there are others to talk there, and then forums and community topics, and Gavin, we usually have you lead that one. Are there other topics that need to go on the agenda? Okay, then let's go ahead. So we've got two open open action items. Oh, whoops, let's go back to news first, excuse me, news. So next LTS is coming out on Wednesday, two days from now, uh, 2.361.2, relatively smaller set of changes in it, as is pretty common for a, a .2 release. Thanks, Basel, for your contributions there. Thanks, Kevin, as well. Uh, Hacktoberfest has started, and contributions are coming in at a at a really quite pleasing pace. It's good to see lots of interaction on the chat channels. It's good to see many pull requests arriving and they are in general useful and helpful. I've seen relatively few spammy pull requests. So it looks like the, the technique that DigitalOcean is using this year that they learned from last year to reduce spam has really helped a bunch. Uh, Gavin, thanks very much to DigitalOcean. If there are any, there's anybody you that you can share our thanks to in the company, we're very grateful to them. Yeah, I can do that. And next piece of news, DevOps World was postponed thanks to Hurricane Ian. Uh, it's it's not, it's not going to happen live. It will be virtual. So the postponement. Their, their plan is to create a virtual conference, but they're trying to work out the details what it will mean to do that virtual conference. Uh, that means that the Contributor Summit was postponed, and we've got to have some more thinking on that. What does it mean for the Contributor Summit? An online Contributor Summit needs a different approach than a face-to-face -face Contributor Summit. So I've started some thoughts, and I'll send those around after I've had a chance to give them a little more time to to develop and evolve. Does that mean I can't wear my hoodie? No, no. Because it, it never happened? And no, of course you can wear your hoodie because it's going to happen. <laughs> but thanks for asking. That's a fair, fair question. One last item. I just wanted item. to brag I had a hoodie. Honestly, that's all I wanted. <laughs> well done. So one last item I have is that two weeks from today, I will be out of the office. I'm going to go take some vacation time with my spouse, and she and I are going to be out of country. Uh, I need a volunteer to lead the meeting. Uh, Gavin, you've got Zoom access. Would you be willing to be the, the Zoom Zoom recording person, et cetera? Yeah, I should be able to handle that now that I can get back in. So, yeah. Great. All right. That's it. Anything else on the news topics before we go to the next? Okay, action items then. Uh, I've still got the action item to use community.jenkins.io for the doc sig. Uh, the doc sig mailing list continues to be almost no traffic. Uh, it's just going to take a while. This certainly won't happen until November at the earliest. Uh, I mean, easy see it. Oh, go ahead. I was, I was surprised to see we had an advocacy email, like first time in like six months. So yeah, it's another interesting one. Right. And and there are, there are several like that, right? The platform SIG mailing list gets maybe one or two a week. And mostly the, the requests there are, please tell me how I can contribute. But then they disappear and don't actually contribute. Yeah, I suspect uh, they don't actually get replies. Because a lot of times when you sign up for a Google group, if you're not paying attention, you have the don't send me things. Oh, oh, okay. So they may be asking a question. We we respond and they never even see the answer. It's it's definitely been an issue with mailing lists in the past. I don't know about Google Group specifically. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the pointer. I may I may extract their email address and send it to them directly so that they know they got an answer. Good, good pointer. Thanks. The other action item was easy CLA and Oleg's taken that. He'll document it. 
right now it's showing that it works, right? So the thing that we need is just documentation, not not that it doesn't work because Kevin registered and it worked just great for him. Any other topics on on action items before we go on? I was going to say at some point we need to decide if we want to enable CLA on other repositories. Like, I don't know, because we don't need to sign a CLA to commit to Jenkins, right? Or um, submit to Jenkins. So we we do not require no. a CLA for submissions. We do require a CLA for if you become a core contributor. Yes. If you become Anytime a core you get access, yeah. Right, right. So I don't know if we actually need to ever en enable the bot or anything. Good, good question. And and it's a. I think that's an open topic for for future discussion. I remember there was a previous discussion about this on the developer list um, about a year ago, maybe or many months ago. And I think the what I what I recall was that um, we wanted to keep it disabled to decrease the barrier to entry. Um, so I don't know if that has changed recently, but that was the last uh, consensus that I recall. We will say easy CLA pretty much has zero barrier. You just click a couple buttons. Indeed. Uh, I'd rather it be finished setting up and fully used before we look at enabling it anywhere. Right. That, that I think that makes sense. Let's be sure that we're confident in it, and and then we can decide if we want to deploy it elsewhere, including getting it documented. Right. That's part of the confidence building. Exactly. All right. Anything else on action items? Okay, next topic then is Antler. Basil, you want to give us a, an overview and talk sure. us through? Sure. Um, so I've been uh, investigating this uh, bug um, regarding Jenkins not compiling on Java 18 or newer. And I've uh, realized that uh, this problem is caused by our use of very old version of Antler dating back to around 2007. And this is still used for two features, the cron tab parsing and uh, parsing the label expressions for build agents. Um, and um, in particular, uh, this Maven plugin that we're using um, does not appear to have survived the migration from subversion to Git. Uh, so it's not like I can just go and file a pull request to add Java 18 support and you know, get a new release and then upgrade to it. Um, it's one of those things that is so old that um, that it's prohibitively difficult to make any changes to it at all, um, leaving the only viable path forward uh, to be an upgrade to Antler 4, which is the current version of Antler that's actively developed. And I've, uh, I've spent some time on Twitter uh, reading tweets from the Antler community, and I identified a consulting firm uh, and reached out to Federico, um, who uh, is uh, uh, the principal of this consulting firm that has experience performing migrations from Antler 2 to Antler 4. And Federico is kind enough to uh, scope out the work, uh, co confirmed that there's interest in the project um, scoped out the work and has uh, written us a proposal, including a very kind discount um, because we are an open source project. And so um, my, my goal in this meeting is to go over that proposal. I've already um, discussed it on the developer mailing list on the technical side, and there wasn't really any uh, major concerns there expressed. Uh, so the the, what I'd like to accomplish in this meeting is to go over the proposal from a governance side, including the cost, and to uh, answer any questions and to take this to a vote to see if we'd like to go forward and engage with uh, Federico and with Strumenta to start this project. Thank Mark, you. Did, you want me to, do you, did you want me to go through the proposal in more detail? I, I was thinking, do we pa let's pause here to see if anyone else has questions even before you start into the proposal. So Gavin or Kevin, any questions from you on on the concept or the 
the why why do this migration? No, I mean, I think uh, Basil pointed out the fact that we, I mean, it's a little overkill for the use we're using it for, but I think no one's going to ever get around to fixing it or removing it. So I think we should just fix it. And I'm a big, I think we should spend some of the money that we have been slowly hoarding for the last couple of years. So in general, I'm in favor of it. I don't have any concerns. Unless it's over our budget, then I have concerns. Well, and it's and it is well, I can confirm it's well within our budget. We've got over seven thousand in the account currently. So so the twenty seven hundred euro that's proposed will will readily fit. And I think I agree with you, Gavin, that I think it's much more practical for us to spend these these funds on experts to do this than it is for us to ask somebody to develop antler four skills for what is a relatively narrow use case, let's let's just get it done. I, I think you're right. Yeah, I mean, Great. there's like I mentioned in that uh, below point, you know, it's not out of the question that we could rewrite this functionality from scratch, um, but nobody has really, you know, volunteered to do that. And this does seem to be the easiest path of least resistance that I can identify um, with the lowest risk to uh, causing regressions um, and also, uh, you know, the most the, kind of the most straightforward path that involves the least amount of code change to what we have already. So yes. that's why I kind of proposed this. Um, but the, the grammar for both of those things, well, maybe not cron, but the, for the label selector is so complex and people have done so many weird things in the past with it. I wouldn't want to even begin trying to write a parser on myself with for it. Yeah, I mean, it, it could it could be done, you know, from scratch. Um, I think, for example, um, Alex Earl has rewritten the parser for um, token macro in the last couple of months to be a, a from scratch parser rather than using um, there was some framework that he was using that I think he got rid of and simplified. So I mean, things like that are not out of the question. It's just that yeah. someone needs to volunteer to do it, and, and nobody has. Um, which is why I've kind of gone this other route instead of updating what we have already. Good. So, Basil, do you want to take us through this? And I assume we need to make it big enough that people like me can still read it. Sure. So, um, so th this code is, already has automated test coverage. Um, so that's kind of um, one of the main points in our favor. Um, you know, this should not be a high risk engagement. Um, the, uh, pro the project builds with Java 11. We've got tests and, that can be run in IntelliJ or in your favorite IDE. So it should be pretty straightforward to go and adjust this code. Um, if you scroll down further, this, kind of, this document kind of talks about the credentials from this consulting firm um, but they've been very involved in the Antler project, as well as doing these kinds of migrations and other types of uh, programming language projects. Um, so I was very confident in um, reading everything that I read from not only their own marketing materials, but in, in seeing their engagement on Twitter and on you know other um, other resources like Stack Overflow. You know they're very active in the Antler community. Uh, which gave me a lot of confidence in this particular group. Um, if you want to scroll down further, I think the next page talks about uh, the uh, what we're asking for specifically. So um, the ask on our side was for Strumenta to prepare a pull request and essentially to do what it takes to get that pull request across the finish line. Um, and I volunteered myself as the point person to work with them uh, during that period, including helping them uh, with any development questions that they might have, as well as um, doing code reviews and uh, doing everything that's needed from our side to shepherd this change across the finish line. Um, the changes are, the scope of the changes are to the two grammars, but also to the Java code that is produced by the grammars. So uh, the way Antler works is that um, Java, the, the grammar files are kind of compiled by Antler into some Java classes. 
and then we kind of extend those classes in the Jenkins code base. So, so they're going to be operating at that boundary of the grammars and the immediate consumers on the Java side. Um, and we have um, clarified that we want all of the automated tests to pass um, before this uh, pull request will be accepted. Uh, so they've provided here, I think they've provided a period of two months um, that they've guaranteed that the tests will pass. So uh, this is not the kind of thing that's gonna change after it's integrated. Basically, if it, if it works on day one, it's just gonna keep working. Um, so that's the uh, offer from their side. If we move on to the next uh, slide, this is going through the cost. And uh, you can see that, um, um, oh, I actually put the wrong number in the agenda. It's actually 1890 euros. Um, I put the first number by accident, I think, because there's a 30% discount that they've offered. Um, there was a question about the tax because if you go down two paragraphs, they write that the client has to be a registered business to avoid the value-added tax. And then Mark and I were not sure whether uh, we meet these registration requirements. So we may have to pay, may or may not have to pay the tax, um, but that is really about it. So um, that's the cost and that's the tax. And uh, I think that's all I have to present about this. If there are any questions. Thank you. So, so one of their comments early on, um, I think you you meant you described it very well. They they say, hey, they will refactor the grammar, and they will have to make some changes in order because Antler two to Antler four is more than just a minor change, right? So they are going to do those changes, and that's part of this part of this bid, part of this proposal. Right, exactly. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions from others? Yeah, so I, the number I put in the agenda is the wrong number. That's the post discount number. Um, if you look at my last slide, that needs to be corrected. Yeah, so let me just update that. Let's see, where is the, the last bullet? It's... The last major bullet. Oh, there it is. Great. Yes. Yeah, so, so if I just put this as 1900 euro. Right. I forget, I forget what the actual. It was exactly, it was 1890. If I go 1900 okay. Okay. Yeah. and then, yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. As far as the, uh, it, as a token of our appreciation for the um, discount, um, we also offered to uh, publish a blog post uh, on the Jenkins blog um, that is uh, technical in content. So not, um, not a marketing blog post. Um, but um, we're planning on basically writing a thank you blog post. And I think we've kind of done this in the past um, with other organizations that offer us discounts, including DigitalOcean. You know, we've, we wrote a blog post for them recently. So that's also right. uh, planned as part of this. Um, and I'll, I'll work with uh, Strumenta to get that blog post written and published. Um, but we thought that would be a nice gesture uh, to thank them for offering us a discount. Great. Any other questions relative to the Antler Antler Consulting Project proposal? So next topic then is a vote. Um, votes on the proposal. So I'm going to start with mine. Mark is plus one. I'm a board member, therefore it's a it's a binding vote. Uh, Gavin, do you want to share your vote? Yeah, I'm in favor of it. Okay, so we we lack one more person for a majority of the board, so I don't have a, a vote yet for Oleg. Um, a vote for Evelina. I'll have to ask for those separately, and Kosuke is the other board member. So I'll I'll I would propose we. Put this as tentative. I assume Basel and Kevin, you're both uh, plus one. Can I confirm that with the two of you? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll use email to ask for Oleg and Evelina and Kosuke to give their vote on it. And uh, once we have a majority, I think we can proceed. The deadline that they set is October 8. So 
mark to complete the uh, the requests and get responses from at least one by October eight, so we can so we can proceed. So that's Saturday. Uh, correct. That is Saturday, Saturday. isn't it? Yeah. Um, that's it's this week, right? Do yeah, we want right. to reach out to? I can't remember her name, the Linux Foundation person, and confirm whether or not we need that. So you don't, if we need to increase that budget. Good, good question. Yes. So let me put that on my list as well. So Mark, to well, and and no matter what, we need to reach out. We need to contact the Linux Foundation to be sure they are able to process this payment. That there are no surprises, etc. So, so that's a good thing. Connect with Linux Foundation to understand if. If that is required, and to confirm they can make the payment, I'm not concerned about making the payment because that's all through done Expensify. But yes, the VAT is concerning. I mean, not even okay. concerning. Um, I suspect Linux is definitely a registered business, but right, it's. I, for me, given how infrequently we do these kind of things, I think it's healthy for me to be sure that I check with them to understand which things do we need to be sure we've done in order to, for this to be smooth and successful. I don't want to create undue burden on Strumenta or on Basel in yeah. dealing with the financial side of this. Do you have access to Expensify? Because I don't. As far as I think I do, but I'll I'll double check to be sure. Yeah, I'm happy to do anything else that needs to be done, but it seems like it would probably be more work to explain it to me than to move forward with your existing contents. But if you need my help, then just let me know. Yeah, and that's they given that if if we put you into the mix, it's even more complicated because they they will likely recognize my name. They may not recognize you and say, "Oh, who is this person?" and "How are they related to Jenkins?" and so sure, so. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't have any concerns about for for this because uh, I believe they just submit a report to Expensify and then we get and then whoever has access, which is not me, hits the approve button. So Great. Mark is probably definitely Oleg, but maybe Mark. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else then on the Antler proposal? No. Thanks, everyone. All right, Basel. Thank you very much for bringing it. Next topic. Um, I'm uh, just to, before we move on. I'll wait to um, I'll wait to uh, circle back with Strumenta until after we get the uh, majority vote on this. So correct. Does that sound good. Yes, that does. Yeah. Thank you, Basil. Sure. And and you're you're certainly welcome. To, if you feel you need to, you're welcome to share the notes and even a pointer to the recording of the meeting, so that they're confident that we are interested. If there's any concern from them. But we we very much want to want to engage with them, and we will do our best to meet their their October eighth gating date. I like that. Okay. All right. Next topic was upcoming elections, and I have to apologize. We've been disrupted a little bit. We had hoped to work on these together with Damien while we were at DevOps World, and oh. Hurricane Ian got in the way. I was so confused how an online election was disrupted by Hurricane. Yeah, well, in this case, it was because Mark and Damien yeah. were going to work no. together and sit together. But you're totally right. Totally makes sense now in context. <laughs> right. What? How can a hurricane disrupt an online? Yeah, I'm because... Like it can disrupt a lot of things, but... <laughs> Damien. Yes. So Damien and I have got to work together on this. And he he only just got back in country after a, a an absolutely horrific experience. <laughs> He just got back in country about 12 hours ago. And so he's he's trying to get some recovery. Maybe it was 20 hours ago now, but he's trying to recover. And he and I will talk some more tomorrow. So what this means practically, though, is we've got to, I think we need to adjust the timeline. Uh, we're in October now. And so we need to gather the candidates and their statements and finalize the candidates by end of October so that we can do voting in November. Gavin, are you okay with that, or does that feel too rushed to you? Do we need to ask for a change of of schedule? Are you comfortable that hey, we can get the voting done in in a month in November? 
Yeah, sorry. Honestly, in my past experience, uh, I think the people who are going to sign up are going to be people who sign up in the first week, both voting and candidates. So honest, I don't have any concerns about this. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So Damien and I will do more work on it um, and would love to have you be willing to, to sign up again, Gavin, but that's of course your choice. I would be thrilled and be happy to support you as, as a board member in the future. So we will plan to use the same process as last year and uh, going forward. Any questions about upcoming elections? Nope, sounds good. Okay, next was then CDF topics. Oops. So here just, there is a new proposal from Damien on the JFrog topic. They've been working very cooperatively with us to try to identify ways to reduce the amount of data transfer we're doing. And what Damien has proposed is a Jenkins enhancement proposal draft of an approach to, to work on it. And so I encourage people to please read his draft. It's a good thing for people to consider what does it mean to the project as we try to reduce data transfer. And it means we've got to change the real mission of repo.ci.jenkins.io.org. It's previously been something very different. And what it was before was using so much bandwidth as to be unreasonable, right? 50 terabytes a month is an awful lot of data to be transferring. So, so Damien's got this proposal out. It needs review. It needs comments. It needs insights. Sweet, we can get our final vote right now. We can. This is this is excellent. Great timing. Hi Oleg. Hi Oleg. Yes. Sorry, I was uh, distracted by little office in one company, and uh, yeah, I forgot about the meeting. Thanks for being here. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. So we, if you're okay, Oleg, we'd like to backtrack a little. We had a proposal from, from Basel to invest 1,900 euro in an upgrade of our Antler grammar from Antler 2 to Antler 4 using a consulting service, Strumenta. Uh, they've given us a quote and Basel presented his summary of it, gave us a good overview. Um, Gavin and I were both plus one on it. Uh, if we would, I was going to get your vote separately, but would love to have your vote now. Or if you've got questions, we'd be happy to go over and try to address any questions you have. Well, we have a bunch of money lying around and not being accused. So from my point of view, any use of money is better than just keeping to them. Great. So can I take that as a plus one? I need to go to the proposal but yeah i think it's a plus one unless uh, there is something really bad coming out of it. i mean if there is no potential conflict of interest etc i think plus one okay all right so are you okay if i note it as plus one tentative and yeah. if you've got a could we set a timeout and say if you've got a concern express the concern within 48 hours yeah, I'm all looking right now. Oh, okay, great. All right. Just for the record, the proposal is only like a page and a half. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, thanks, Oleg. And uh, if there's any other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. So are we going to do it through LFX mentorship? Or how do you see it? I was assuming we do it through LFX. I'm not sure it would be mentorship, but I don't. So we want LFX to, or whoever's whoever manages that $7,000 that's in our budget, we have them or in our account, we have them pay this amount to this to Strumenta, this company. Mm. Okay, so it's basically just contract work. 
right it is it's just mm-hmm. it is contract work to a company that is expert in antler grammars and in antler grammar transitions mm-hmm. okay. i think uh, it looks perfectly fine so the only concern is taxation etc uh, but yeah, as long as uh, they and the Linux Foundation take care of it, I'm perfectly fine. Great. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that takes care of my action item. So I have one action item to connect with the Linux Foundation to be sure that we understand if the that we know how to pay these the people at Strumenta and if any value-added tax is assessed there was a concern in the proposal that we have to be a registered business. And so we got to check is Linux foundation registered in the way that would satisfy that need or not. Mm -hmm. So who does currently have access to the Expensify backend? Uh, If I recall correctly, um, I asked for membership um, for all board members maybe one year ago, but uh, since the, the board changed and yeah, I'm not sure whether all the access was granted. I have uh, reporter access and that's it. So no access to Expensify as approver? No. Nonetheless, I'm just not seeing it, but I don't remember ever being approval approver. Mm-hmm. So is that something I should take up with them in my conversations as well, Oleg, is be sure that board members have approver permission? Mm, so you can ask uh, one big problem for this system is that uh, it supports only one. Uh, oh. I mean, from uh, as far as LFX concerned, okay. so basically paying for LFX expenditure because currently I have a problem with Captain. All the accounts were created by the Linux Foundation, and now they cannot transfer access to us. Got but, it. Uh, um, yeah, for. Uh, uh Jenkins so the project belongs to me I believe and expensify a backend I was also said the approver that we found a way to add more approvers but I'm not sure who actually got the permission after all these groups I'm looking right now but um, yeah it's probable that it's just me okay so so we're reasonably confident that you have permission yeah, I have permission. So I approved uh, Wadix request recently. So. Okay, good. All right, so we've got we've got a path forward. Very good. Anything else on the on the antler uh, con- contract proposal? Thank you. Okay, so next topic then, we were discussing upcoming elections. Damien and I have got more work to do there. The plan is that we'll announce the elections in October, uh, gather candidates and their statements and finalize them for November voting so that we can we can proceed with installing the new officers in early December as scheduled. Sorry that we missed, but Damien was disrupted. Damien and I's work together was disrupted thanks to Hurricane Ian keeping me away from Florida and stranding him in Florida. So any questions on upcoming elections? All right, next topic then, CDF topic. So JFrog uh, making progress. Damien has proposed a a Jenkins enhancement proposal uh, of t- how we repurpose or redefine the mission of repo.jenkinsci.org in order to reduce its bandwidth demands. And he believes that we're going to need a multi-step process and that each of the steps along the way will want to measure the impact of that to see how close are we to our goal of reducing data transfer from 50 terabytes a month to less than 10 terabytes a month. Any questions there? Okay, next topic then was yearly project previews at the CDF Technical Oversight Committee meetings. 
And Oleg, is there anything new that you wanted to share there? We had discussed possibly doing a, pre a Jenkins presentation in November. Any guidance you want to give us or insights? No, let's just do it when we can. So currently, yeah, this QC is occupied with uh, uh, tecton tectonic radiation. So we are launching the process and other pending reviews. Uh, but yeah, at any moment, you're welcome to join. Good. Okay, so the Tecton project is is graduating. Yep. Excellent. So there Congratulations are some questions about uh, the security review because, for example, for Jenkins, we didn't do one. For Tecton, we did. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Everything is going okay. Congratulations to them. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm looking um, in the LFX Jenkins account. As far as I can tell, it's just me who have access. Okay. But but even if it's just you, that means that if Strumenta submitted a request to be reimbursed, you could approve it. Yeah, so there are two steps. Firstly, I would need to add them as beneficiary on LFX crowdfunding. And secondly, I would need to, to approve the expense report. Okay, but yes, great. It's quite straightforward. Thank you. Okay. Very good. So I think in terms of that, then Basel, I think we're ready to have you let let Strumenta know that it's approved. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks for thanks for bringing the proposal and please thank Strumenta for the discount. We're very grateful for the 30% discount they're so kindly offering. Sure. Any other CDF topics, Oleg, that, that we need to be reviewing? No. Okay, hey, next topic then was forums and community topics. Gavin, are there topics there that you'd like to highlight? Not really. Um, you already mentioned the new Jenkins is away story, and I was pretty happy with, unhappy with how how frustrating or how nitpicky the system was, but it did work out itself out pretty quickly. Yeah, actually, I was I was thoroughly impressed. I, I will yet find a way to get it. Jim Klimov had asked, hey, could he get a t-shirt? And I, I have promised myself I will find a way to get him a t-shirt. I don't know how that will be, but we will find a way to get him a t-shirt. A Jenkins is the way t-shirt. Yeah. It's a great story. It, it is really Jim, impressive. Jim has been very helpful testing uh, changes and also contributing to plugins, including just a few that I'm familiar with are the throttle concurrence plugin and the lockable resources plugin. And uh, also, I think the IRC bot plugin he in, is involved with. So he's been a great member of our community, and it would be great to show our appreciation to him. Wholehearted agreement. His contributions to the Git client plugin and, and the technique they're using are real positives. So, yeah, very grateful to him. All right. So there was an open question that I had on, there was a question raised to the board mailing list, someone asking, hey, please remove a reference to company X on the, on the bug tracker. When I look at the reference, it's actually pretty trivial. It's a host name is all that the reference is. But what I wanted was general guidance on the technique. When someone asks, makes a request like this, hey, please remove this reference, how do we handle it? Is it, okay, I just go delete what I can? Do we, should we do nothing? Just ignore the request? What's what's the guidance in general? I'm, I'm not familiar with the process. Personally, on this one, I would just ignore it. Um, it's an automated request, which doesn't really have any real purpose. It's like, don't mention this host name. Well, if it's this was from Jira, was was this from a Jira ticket that they wanted the host name removed? Exactly. Things, yeah. Everyone, everyone who's part of the organization has edit privileges on Jira descriptions. So, 
I don't think that they need us to do this, right? They could do it themselves if they wanted to, it seems like. So that would, oh. I think that would, I mean, if it's in the description, I guess if it's in a comment, um, I think you can only edit your own comments, but if it's in a, an attachment or in a description, I think anyone could edit it. So um, it may, you know, may very well be a reasonable response to say, you know, uh, anyone can can edit this. So just go and, and make the change yourself. Um, if it's if it's something that's in a comment um, that the original poster cannot uh, log in again, that that could be a legitimate reason to ask an administrator to edit it. If the mm. if if the content is in a comment that can no longer be edited by the original account. Um, so. The request is from a so-called security team that says they didn't want this post name posted. I mean, honestly, to me, that's one of those things that once you put it on public on the internet, you can't really take it away. So yes, uh, someone could go in and I, uh, I suspect you're right that the account in question is no, the person is not there for whatever reason. It's an old account or old email or old um, ticket. But I also kind of been like, I don't even know who, how many people have access, min access to uh, Dura to go in and edit these things. Yeah, so I certainly do. I'm a jury administrator, so it turns out I can I can make any of the changes here that would like to be done. I was I was as much looking for what's the general guidance. So in this case, the request is, hey, remove references to this thing, uh, I could delete the ticket completely. It's it's closed. So well, I mean, it I, got migrated. So you deleting the ticket isn't going to actually solve the problem. Exactly. And they didn't ask for a deletion on the migration destination. Yeah. So so there's a piece of that where, OK, I could do I, I could certainly remove the references, you know, images that might have it in it, any of those things. That's easy to do. And I can I will happily do that as a way of saying, hey, we did it. We, we satisfied your request. Is there a general point of guidance there of what? I, I have low tolerance for automated tooling. For, and it's like the same thing with, you know, I don't know if you were in the uh, Docker channel last week when someone reported there was an issue that in no way made sense. There were, there were Windows related CVs in the Linux issue, in the Linux Docker image. So right. I have a very low tolerance to these automated scanning tools that don't have any real human interaction to them. So when someone emails us and says, hey, our tool detected this thing, you should remove it. You're like, you know. I would really? concur with Gavin that it doesn't it doesn't seem as important if it's the result of a scanner rather than a, a, a human initiated contact. So, you know, we were we were debating whether to use scare quotes or not, but I think a more accurate term would be uh, a security team bot asked us not to mention a host name, right? So that that's very different from an actual security team making the request in the sense that there's a higher likelihood for it to be low priority or false positive. Um, so yeah, I, I would agree. We can we can turn down the bot request, but leave open the possibility of accommodating it if it's escalated to a human. That seems so reasonable to me. If you want to deal with it, you can deal with it, Mark. I'm not going to, in these kind of scenarios, I usually like, unless they actually Specific, like I don't know it's one of these ones where they only caught half of it and they didn't actually look at the content they just sent us email and you're like right and the, the the concern is that a host name is made public right and you're Which... like okay if this is a security concern to you and it shouldn't be you can change you should probably change your host name if this is the concern it's already on the internet so yeah, it's up to you. You're the admin. You can decide what to do. But I don't think as a board, there's any real hard, fast rule. We don't get enough of them to make a big deal. In fact, Great. I don't think I've ever got, seen one before. Excellent. OK. That covered all the topics for today's agenda, then. Any other topics that need to be addressed before we close? All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much for being here.